So today we're going to try and figure out how to do a sensory table for infants, for toddlers, and for preschoolers. So let's start with infants. It's a very simple sensory table. I just got something like a drawer from one of my organizers in the house. And for an infant, you have to remember that they're all about their mouth. So you're only going to put a little bit of water in because of safety issues. And you're probably just going to do like a splash. And so you do have water. So the simplest part, you know that they, they want to put things in their mouth. So you could do something that goes along with teething. Uh, like these are toothbrushes that I put through my dishwasher and that I wouldn't mind if uh, they're very clean and of course the container's been cleaned and bleached if I put water down for a baby with toothbrushes in it. And so they're going to be doing this a little bit but I also, after they get done and they're saturated with using teethers, putting things in their mouth, you can also give them cups that are clean and this may be something that they would put in their mouth. But you can't put anything that's smaller than a quarter in an infant sensory tub because of choking. So they have tubes where you can measure things, but who has the tube around when you need it? So just, you can get a quarter out and see if this is bigger than a quarter, then it can go in there. Uh, this one is, I don't like the idea that this would go in a mouth and that they would chew on this with the glitter. So this is something I wouldn't do. And I might do something like cups uh, to let them play with it. So the next level I would go to with an infant after I've got some teething is I would take this stuff out and maybe it's to the side and I have a clean towel underneath. So if this goes on the ground, that would be okay. And then maybe I'd splash a little bit more water in. And the idea is for them to splash, for them to be going like this. So it's, it's safe water. It's not really deep, it's shallow. Uh, they can play with it. It's uh, a sensation where they're tapping and they would enjoy it. Most infants would really enjoy this. So the guys who crawl and the gals that crawl come over and this is what they're looking to do. However, if you let them just have at it, hopefully there's a towel under because what they tend to do, at least in the infant classroom, is then they tend to sit in it because isn't that what this is for, for sitting. So if you're close by and you're ready to try something new and different, you could try your hand soap. Now this is something that you've washed their hands with it, you know they're not allergic to it, and so um, you're gonna put a couple of pumps in and then you might work with them and show them or see what they'll do. I wonder what you'll do with this soapy water. How does it feel? I wonder how it feels to you. Uh, how can you play with this water? You know, and as, as I keep swishing my hand, there's another motion that they're learning. There's all sorts of things that are going on simultaneously at one time. So we're making bubbles. Now we have talked about bubbles. You don't really need a wand. You can blow through your hand to make bubbles. So that's another thing that you could do with a infant sensory tub. Now, you don't want them to get uh, this in their eyes. So uh, another idea would be to have something they can splash their hands into that you would put down for them to rinse their hands before they walk away so they don't start putting stuff in their eyes and things like that. So is you want their hands to be in here. So some other things that might be around your house that they could chew on might be like your measuring cups. And I've dedicated them to the kids playing because my dog chewed on this one and I don't want it back. So there could be some other things to keep their hands in here and not on their eyes, on their face, or in their mouth. So again, you have something close by and another trick is, if you allow them to have a pacifier in their mouth, their mouths are tied up. So just a little trick for infants. Now this is infants. Now as the children get older, the sensory tub gets a little bit more complex. So let's say this is an older infant, someone who is 18 months old, who loves babies, and wants to give their baby a bath. And so 
what you would do is, we happen to have a baby doll bathtub here. And if you have a little bit of water, again, not a lot, and then you would have to use a little washcloth, uh, just wet the washcloth and let them just rub the baby and then have a little towel for the baby to um, get uh, wrapped in and dried up. Uh, this is um, a little baby doll that was $2.99 at Walmart. So it's small enough and it's something that I think children would really be drawn to. So if you don't have one of these bathtubs, um, again, uh, the there's no soap in here. It's water and it's just uh, a little bit of a soap on a washcloth and you wash their face and their body and then uh, you would dry them off uh, in, in maybe another dry washcloth. So these are just some ideas for infants and a lot of infants love baby dolls. Uh, so I know where this is going. It's going in their mouth. So again, you have to be really careful to watch what happens. Uh, a sensory tub for an infant has to be supervised at all times. So the next step I would go to if you had uh, an infant that was 18 months or older um, is I might add some things to the sensory tub. So I'm going to do a little bit more water, but as the water gets deeper, the sensory tub also gets more dangerous or more sloppy because you're going to want to, like, let's just flip this upside down and experiment. So you do have to watch, and one way I have things for pouring in here, but I could also make a oobleck. I'm going to pour some of this out into the baby bath. And oobleck is just water and it's cornstarch. So it's just a substance that um, is edible if the children put it in their mouth. It's um, a really wonderful sensation and you don't have to worry about danger. So again, just a little bit of water. Here comes some cornstarch. And I might leave it like that to see what they would do with the powder. And it, I won't stir it for them and just ask them, oh, I wonder what you could do with the powder in the water. This is cornstarch. I wonder how it goes with water. What can you do with it? You know, and then as they touch it, oh, you're touching it. Uh, you're putting it through your hands. You're trying to eat it. It's safe to eat. This has all been clean. It's just water and cornstarch. I wonder how it tastes. Oh, I see that you're putting your hand back in. Oh, it looks like you're mixing it. What happens when you mix cornstarch and water? Oh, you're moving your hand together and you're mixing it. You know, and for those who are really brave, you could add uh, some food dye. I'm not that brave because food dye actually sticks on your hands in your, and so the babies, it would be a very little bit of food dye. So here we are with uh, cornstarch and water. And some of the questions are, how does it feel? Um, I wonder what happens if we add some more cornstarch. Um, what else can we do with this? Then you can actually add blue and yellow food dye um, and in different parts and see, I wonder what happens if the blue and the yellow mix. So it keeps extending. So sensory tubs are soothing. They're therapeutic. It's meant to for a baby to be there for a while, to experiment safely uh, with um, whatever substance you put in that you don't have to supervise uh, extensively. So things like your cleanup would be towels underneath this. It's only cornstarch. Uh, things that get on them, it's only cornstarch. It all comes off. So uh, you have to remember, I also had soap in here. And I usually do add soap whenever I have cornstarch. It just somehow, I feel like I'm cleaning. So that's just one more slippery substance to add and to watch what happens with the cornstarch. And as it dries out later, you can put this up and pull it back down. And uh, you'll see that as it dries, it cakes. And to talk to the children about, you know, what's your prediction? What do you think will happen uh, when we pull it down again? Uh, would you like to see what happened? What is this? And it should be cakey and powdery again. I wonder how we reconstitute the cornstarch and water to a liquid again. What do we need to add? You know, what do you think? Should we add some water? Let's try it. And so your, um, this is just for the infants. As 
the sensory table comes into play for older children. Uh, again, uh, it's safe for infants. This is actually an infant sensory table because you can go deeper with it because they have to stand up to it. So as they stand up to it, you don't have the danger of them falling into it and drowning or something happening. So as they pull themselves up and they're there and you have your water, again, you're back to things like um, a, a water wheel. You're uh, back to things that you can add to the sensory table. And some of the things I always do a, a squirt of, of soap because they love bubbles. And so as they keep playing with it, more and more bubbles come about. And then if you want them to, um, there's uh, these things, bathtub toys that you can add that, you know, oh, this, this has a shape in it. Oh, didn't realize I might be blowing bubbles with it. So you can add some of your bath time toys. Uh, you can <clears throat> also think about them cleaning some of their play dishes in here too uh, and stirring. And for those who are really brave, you could add either sand to this or you can add dirt. And you can have a roadway for cars and all sorts of other things that go along with water. So as you're pouring, there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes into just scooping, you know, that's fine motor, that you, your hand-eye coordination to pour it into another container that's really huge. And for whatever reason, the children really like to do things like this. They like to fill up all the containers that they can. And yes, my dog chewed on that one too. And that's a big deal for them. Um, so some of the other things in the house that you can add are things from your laundry detergent that have scoopers on them. Uh, some other things are if you have a cosmetic brush. Now this is for older children because the younger ones are going to put it in their mouth and they'll chew off the paint. They'll probably eat the fibers so the hair here. So this is only for the older kids. That, excuse me, that know how to um, use something that's this big. It doesn't go in their mouth. So preschoolers could do a whole lot with this. Again, you can add cornstarch. You can ha add sand. You can add dirt and have a mud day. And maybe I'll do a mud day, clean mud and, and regular mud and show you how that goes. But this is, this is really fun. The other part is paint brushes and then to the sidewalk to make your whatever um, designs you want to make in the sun. This is really fun to do. And then another idea is to take your camping equipment that's sitting in your garage that you're not using right now and to use all the canteens and all the interesting things that go along with your camping equipment uh, with the uh, strainer that's in here, uh, with the top, as if the children are cooking and to create uh, some sort of outside kitchen for them using the sandbox. That is, is going to be a great hit with them. So I'm trying to look at, oh, the kettle from camping, uh, all the things that the dog chewed <laughs> that you could use. Oh, I really miss this. I got a new one though. And some of the sandbox stuff that you can use if you add dirt into here. And of course, more bathtub toys, uh, the duck. Uh, some of your Play-Doh toys can also come out if you're doing mud or sand. And again, bathtub toys. So enjoy your sensory tubs. Make sure they're safe for whatever age you're working with and that they're supervised. Okay, enjoy. Bye-bye.